This is Laguna Woods Stories, the uh, program where we meet interesting people who live here in Laguna Woods. And our guest today is Wendy Hames. And uh, Wendy, how long have you lived here in Laguna Woods? Oh, Tom. Well, first of all, let me say I'm pl pleased to be here. Thank you for asking. Um, I will be here. It'll be five years come, like, July. And you have been a very... Busy girl, if I may say that, during I, your time here. We yes, I, show up in I all believe kinds of places. in being busy. Thank you. Let's go back to the very beginning. Where, where did you make your, your debut into the world? Wow. Although there wasn't a big crowd to see it. I was actually born uh, in Chicago. Ah. That's where I hailed from originally. Okay. But I took off for parts north uh, in the 70s. I, I uh, remember that you you uh, lived and worked for some time in, uh, would you say, northern Canada? I would say it, and you can say it too. Um, I, yes, we, I was teaching. I was teaching in the very remote part of northern Alberta. Oh. So it was about 60, 70 miles from the Northwest Territory border. Wow. But we also spent a lot of time traveling through the territories of the Yukon, especially in the summer. Wow. So that's what we did. So, so it's beautiful there in the summertime, but the winters are, what, six months long or something? You know, I'm glad you brought it up. Let, let me, yes, the winters were very long. We got snow starting in September, and we got to keep whatever we got until the, probably the end of May. Really? Um, but let me correct a, mis a misunderstanding, maybe, about cold. So at 40 below, it's the same as minus 40 on the Celsius scale. They actually meet at that point. But like we know, cold, like heat, is more tolerated, tolerated better when it's dry. Uh -huh. And up there, it was a very dry cold. So you couldn't even make a snowball. It was just soap powder flakes. Yeah, so so cold that it wouldn't stick together, I guess. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So dry cold is, and we knew how to dress for it, and our houses were built to withstand that cold, mm -hmm. and well, it was good. How did it happen that you that you got that job? Were you fascinated with that territory, or let's just say there was a man involved? Oh, there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it. it a lot. Yeah, it. To me, it was like serving in the Peace Corps, but far north. I was off everybody's Rand McNally maps. Nobody huh. knew where I was. I was just up north. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I have uh, been uh, a little north of Edmonton uh -huh. uh, in a, a small area uh, called Rich Valley, which uh, hmm. where my mother was actually born in a log cabin wow. in uh, Rich yeah. Valley, Alberta, Canada, huh. and that's Pretty far north, but not nearly as far as you were. No, you have to go another uh, 400 miles. Wow, 400. You know, because no, it's, it's a big you know, province. Yes, the provinces are about 900 miles from wow. north to south. So, so. It's, it's above which state in the U.S.? I uh, think Montana. Montana, And mainly. go north. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for so. sure. And I mean, and then back then, I mean, the roads were not paved. You were on gravel roads. There was only one road. There may uh -huh. only still be one road. Uh, in the winter, the rivers were our roads. We could drive the rivers. Oh, yeah. And it's something to watch a big semi-trailer drive across the Peace River. <laughs> and you know, the ice is maybe six inches thick, yeah. and they do it. They drove right across that river. I had the experience when I was a student at Michigan State University. Uh -huh. We used to walk, routinely walk across the Red Cedar River that flowed through the middle of campus. Really? Except that one day... When I was walking across it, the ice cracked, and I went in up to my neck. <gasps> oh, and that's, oh, that's oh. a very bad feeling. Yes, that is. Fortunately, there wasn't much uh, uh, current to the to the river at that point. How so did I, you get out? Well, I I uh, eventually got my arms up on top of the ice and was able to kind of kick and get get up on top of the ice and get out. But it was very very hard. Yeah, uh, I believe it. So uh, yeah. yeah. If there had been any current, I would have been swept under the yeah. ice. And, oh, that's and, scary. I don't want to think about that. That would be the, the end of my story. Yeah. But uh, that was quite a few years ago, so yeah. here I am. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. We're better for it. So, so, uh, so how long were you in, in Canada? Uh, actually, about 25 years. Oh, my, my. I married, had a family. Wow. Uh, the girls were all born there. None of us are still there now. We've all migrated back to the States. And oh. actually, from Alberta, I went to Kentucky. Okay. I know. 
And why, heard, why Kentucky? Well, I was going to say I heard they had bourbon, but that wouldn't be true. They do, but that wasn't why I went. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kentucky is known for uh, horses and bourbon, I guess. Anything horses, else? Horses, bourbon, tobacco. Tobacco, yeah. Yes, yeah, so all the, the, the sins. Oh. Gambling, tobacco, uh -huh. horse. Yeah, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, that's where all the old money is was. It, so is that, is that what attracted you there? The, uh... No, um, <laughs> let's just say there was a man involved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, I, see I see a, a theme, do I you? I see a theme developing <laughs> here, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, and I was teaching there as well. So, uh -huh. um, so you're teaching grade school? Or? Um, middle, high, and I also did a little college teaching for oh. teachers, teaching teachers. Yeah. Well, what did you teach? Oh, English. Oh, okay. And there was a reading specialist. Uh -huh. I know. If you need somebody who knows English literature for a trivia team, just let me know. Uh, you're the one. I'm the one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or not. So, so you were in, in uh, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, uh, yeah. horse and bourbon country yeah, for absolutely. how long? Absolutely. 25 years. Oh, there's a pattern. Another, yeah. another, another thing 25 years. That's yeah. A, that's yeah. A, oh, and I probably that's would have been there to this day if I hadn't found out about Laguna Woods. Oh. Honest to gosh. It's uh, the best thing ever. Okay. I had a well, college how did that happen? Friend. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I don't mean to preempt your questions. Uh, I was wondering where to go, and my kids were kind of spread all over the place, and they were all very happy to have me come there, but I didn't want to go where they were living. Oh. And uh, I was very happy, actually, in Louisville. It's a wonderful city. It's unlike the rest of Kentucky. It's very progressive. They had wonderful theater, and I love the theater. But anyway, I had a friend from college who lived in the Bay Area, and she told me in 2018, she said, well, I'm moving to Orange County. And I said, where's that? <laughs> and she said, well, come visit. And I did come visit her in 2019. And I said, oh, no, I like this place. This oh. suits me to a T. Yay. Yay. Well, that's great. And so you, uh, you pulled up stakes once again and, and, yep. uh, and, and, and moved here. Put everything in, a, in one of those pods, sold all my furniture, didn't move any real furniture, just all my books and my other junk and stuff like that, and ended up here. And it's, it's been really good sailing since then. Now, you have been uh, uh, active in several several groups here, uh, yes. several different uh, activities. I know. Uh, pickleball, I think. And, oh, yeah. Tennis. And tennis. Tennis was what my first in was. That's what I first fell in love with here, the tennis center. Uh -huh. uh, pickle came later. Of course, the, the pandemic, the COVID hit, you know, in 2020. Yeah. So that kind of interfered with things, but not much because I could still go hiking. We're surrounded by wilderness areas. There's hiking. I bought an e-bike so I could go biking. Um, but eventually also, like, the theater groups are, I'm partial to theater, and I go to a lot of theater outside the village. Uh -huh. uh, I was at Costa Mesa Playhouse yesterday. It was fabulous. Hmm. It's probably the best theater house in SoCal. Uh, and what was it? Uh, Costa Mesa Playhouse. Oh, Costa Mesa Playhouse. Yeah, it's we, a little theater. We have theater. a lot of little theaters. A lot of here. little, I know, and I'm discovering them all, and I could yeah. name them, a lot of them, but they're wonderful. A Even the of, high school, the high school and the college, they're, they're great theater, too. A lot of 99-seat uh, theaters. Uh, yeah, small uh, ones. Because uh, equity actors can perform in these without violating their contracts. So. Yeah, good. Yeah, I, for whatever reason, for whatever so. reason, we are, the location draws good talent. There's definitely yeah. good talent out there. There's a lot of yeah. people who come out here to, yeah. to work in Hollywood and yeah. end up settling down and and doing community theater. So That's we, right. we have a lot of a lot of actors in this area. I, and I think that really speaks to the village. I'm always amazed. I love the fact that I'm always meeting new people. Uh -huh. And they're often well-educated. They're often well-traveled. They often have wonderful life experiences. And they're also open, many of them, to meeting new people as well. Mm -hmm. So it makes, for, makes it interesting. People very often come here from other areas. Of course, mm -hmm. some, some are local and just move here from Southern Orange County anyway. But, uh, but mostly come from a lot of... Uh, a lot of different areas. They so do. It's, a, it's a diverse it is. Uh, clientele it is. That, it is. Uh, that come here. Yeah. Now, among other things, uh, activities that you've been in, involved with, uh, you've been involved with uh, theater. Yes, that's here. right. And uh, 
uh, you have uh, acted in in some <laughs> movies that. Oh, that, that's true. <laughs> that, that we have Trust done. you to bring the that video, up. Yep. The video club have, has done. Yep. Um, and and uh, also in a little public service announcement that. Uh, that's right. That, that we did is still running. I think. It uh, certainly is running because I've had probably five people in the last month or so tell me they've seen it. Uh -huh. I've seen you on TV, and I go, what? Yeah. And then I remember. Yeah, the PSA. It was great. Yeah, we yeah. recorded that uh, some yeah. time ago, but yeah. but it's. Uh, it, it, the theme of it is is that uh, you should take the responsibility to make a phone call to check on, on somebody you haven't heard from. That's right. We had a lot of people that isolated during COVID and have not emerged yet. So, uh, but uh, I, I'm sure you'll agree with me because I find that the people I've met here, and somebody once told me shortly after I moved in that these are probably the people you're going to know for the rest of your life. Yeah. And that was a that's a fair thing to say, I think. Uh, that people here check on each other. People yeah. here kind of bond, form little groups that take care of each other, check on each other, and I think it's fabulous. It is a village in that regard. And a lot of us do not have family living nearby right. uh, uh, to to check on us, so we need to uh, check on each other. That's right. So, uh, I love uh, my neighbors. My immediate neighbors are very they're very good to me. Uh, I like to think I'm as good back to them, but uh, it's been interesting, you know. Uh, and and I know the theater. The theater is a is a great thing to be involved with. I'll give a nod off to the Theater Guild and to Old Pros. Uh -huh. They do stuff. But, but there's other things. That, for example, my other passion right now. I've gotten back into bridge. Oh. And I'm going to plug the bridge center because it's fabulous. They run games, I think, every day and some evenings as well, too. Oh, bridge is huge here, apparently. It is. I'm not smart enough to play bridge. Oh, but, please. Uh, so I've been told. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> you can play bridge. Yeah. Not, but, uh, and uh, and I've discovered people here who play mahjong, which uh -huh. is great. Okay. And probably, so you don't have to be either Jewish or or and, Chinese? To no, play or mahjong. even a woman. There are men who play mahjong really? that I, I have met here. Yeah. Although I've heard tell that somebody says their husband plays. So, yeah, yeah it's possible. See, you could learn that. I, I probably, I, I probably could give yeah. it, give it a little time and and, and effort. Yeah. Uh, so you have been in in some uh, theatrical plays besides your movie uh, experience. Yes. Uh, here. Uh, I have. Um, uh, I was in Free Radicals. Well, actually, I was the voice off stage because they needed somebody who could do a bit of an accent, you know. Oh. And I like to have that little Welsh accent is the back, you know, my default accent. can go up and down a little bit like Irish, but not quite. Okay. So I don't know if they need something like that. Or I did a, no, that was with Theatre Guild. I, I, I did an... Uh, uh, an Asian kind of accent, subcontinent Indian accent for that. Uh -huh. um, but not a lot of things. I tend to be more in the background these days. I can't memorize lines that well. I can't memorize lines. <laughs> One of the advantages of, of uh, doing movies versus stage plays, uh, you don't have to memorize the whole thing at once. You just have to memorize today's page. Or that's right. I like that. Yeah, something that's, something that's like true. That. I, yeah, I probably did more theater when I was back in Louisville, but I like to I like to be involved with theater. I love theater people. I, I love the camaraderie, and I love those kind of people who are involved. And yeah. I like to costume theater, and costuming theater is what got me started in really? shopping thrift stores because I am a big thrift shopper, and I originally started to help costume people. Really? But so, so, uh, so do you? Buy most of your clothing in in thrift stores. <laughs> yes, <laughs> guilty as charged. Yes, You're I guilty. do. I buy everything in thrift stores. I'm, first of all, that speaks to the idea of we should reduce our footprint on this earth. We want to keep things out of landfills. Uh -huh. So if something can be reused or repurposed or recycled, certainly let's try that first. And um, I've I've had a ball shopping at thrift stores. You never know what you're going to find. Uh, and certainly in the village, people um, will put things out, you know, they're getting rid of, and then yeah. sometimes that could be, sometimes I just do it because I said, oh no, that should not go into the landfill. Somebody needs that, or at least take it to the to the Salvation Army or Goodwill or something. A year or two ago, uh, uh, I was pretty unhappy with the 
with a rather ugly chandelier that was hanging over my uh, dining room table. Really? And as I was out walking one day, I came across a very lovely chandelier that somebody really? had put out near the trash cans, and I thought, that's going on, on the ceiling in my, in my condo. That's and funny. it did, and I love it, and, and the price was just right. Yes, it was. That's funny you say that, because I picked up a chandelier that somebody put out. It was a very rusty, but it was very ornate. It was an elaborate chandelier. It certainly was beyond repair, but I said, oh, no, that's going to hang from the tree in my backyard, so to speak, oh, and really? I hung it out and I wound um, uh, solar lights, little tiny solar fairy lights all over it, and now at night it just glows with this lights. It's really pretty. I uh -huh. love it. So that's, again, you know, take one man's trash, I guess, becomes yes. another man's or woman's I, treasure. I, I would not think that uh, uh, South Orange County is a, is a place where you'd find a lot of, of recycled places or or what did you call it? Well, I think the people in the village are often squeezed for what they should do huh. uh, with their stuff. Sometimes if they're moving out, sometimes the people, their, their children or grandchildren, don't know what to do with all the property. They try to sell it sometimes. Sometimes in a, because of a time crunch, they're faced with just putting it by the dumpster and hoping for the best. So really we have bulk pickup, and they will take everything, you know. Uh -huh. and, and I know the Trading Post will try to sell some things as well, but it's tricky. F selling furniture and those things. You know, I heard from somebody that was, I think it may be the, the big villages down in Florida. Maybe it's the villages. Maybe it wasn't them. But it was a, 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 senior, th a senior community uh -huh. where they ran a thrift store. Oh, yeah. And people could donate items uh -huh. to the to the thrift store in their community. I mean, I don't see why we couldn't do that here. I think we would get a lot of donations, and I think a lot of people would find that very useful. And there are quite a few thrift stores, what, within five miles or so of here? You know, there aren't. No? No. You know, there really aren't. There's the big, there's the only the, there's the two big ones that are close by, which is the Goodwill and the Salvation Army, and then there's Mercy Warehouse, which is down on Alicia, down by Alicia Creek, down that way. Uh -huh. um, and there's one or two little ones, but not a lot. No? No. Okay. No, there aren't. Hmm. Much to my dismay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at Laguna Woods, uh, or beyond the gates, I should say, yeah. uh, we did a, a program on thrift stores one time, and, and I think we, we highlighted three or four of them. Something, something okay, like good. that. So there, there are some in the area. There are some. I mentioned yeah, two or yeah. three, but yeah, there yeah. aren't a lot. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So you feel like you're doing uh, the earth a favor by yeah. by reusing things rather than just letting them go to the uh, uh, landfill. Right. I, I think everybody should ad try to adopt that little bit. If they, everybody can do just a little bit more than what they're doing mm -hmm. instead of just throwing things away. I mean, you know? It, it, it may be as simple as, as dropping something off at Goodwill or Salvation Army. Or if I could actually, now that you brought it up, I actually, and I'm surprised I didn't think of it, I volunteer at a thrift store. Oh, yeah. And I don't think of it as a typical thrift store because it's upscale resale. It's run by South County Outreach. Oh, okay. And it's, a, it's, it's more upscale in terms of thrifting, um, but I, I work there because I help in the book section. Oh. So if anybody's giving away books, don't put them out in the garbage. Make sure we get them at the thrift store. You can try giving them to the uh, the library here, right? Uh, too, they're very selective in what they will accept. But uh, I Good went point. in with a, a box of books one day, and and they wanted while I waited to go through them and decide. Oh, we'll take this one. They had a committee out there looking at the books, and I didn't want to stand there all day, so I took my my books over to Salvation Army, and they took them all. They did take them. Good. Yeah, but, That's uh, good. But, uh, but, but, yeah. Well, sometimes I also have this online presence, so I buy and sell online. Oh, really? I, yes, on eBay and on a site that's mostly women's clothing. It's, women's, it's all actually women, men's, and children's clothing. It's called mm -hmm. Poshmark. But I do sell on that because, again, I get handed things. I have things I find. I mean, like, one of the funniest things I sold was I found a um, Versace coat. Ooh. 
at the Salvation Army. I actually pulled it off. It was a big white winter puffy coat, big. And I thought about using it as a Halloween costume <laughs> until I looked at the label and saw it was Versace. I oh. mean, um, I couldn't really believe, is it really Versace? And it really was. So I decided to sell it. So it cost me, it was a half off sale, so maybe it cost me $6 uh -huh. at the Salvation Army. And I sold it for 50. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was a little bit more change in my pocket. Uh, the, I know. The, la the label alone is worth. Uh, Maybe. You know, worth some money. It took a while to sell. Didn't sell immediately. Yeah. yeah. But I do that all the time. Like so, five. So is that more of a hobby? Uh, you, you do it. I. Yes. I. I think I need help though. It's really hard for me <laughs> to pass. I'm. I'm I, I vowed that I would no longer buy. I wouldn't buy anything to resell if it happened to come my way. Because often at the thrift store, all our donations, we get, we keep a fourth to resell. We probably put a half into, we further along to this place in like, I think Huntington Beach, that's a, a homeless shelter. So they get a lot of our stuff. And then a fourth of the stuff that comes in just gets trashed. Yeah. And I take anything that's going into the trash, if it's worthwhile, that I can maybe fix or clean and resell. I know that, uh, that some of the uh, charities, that, like, like Salvation Army, I think, does this, uh, that, that things that, that don't or won't sell here, they, they bail, literally, and, and send to other nations where, where they're uh, appreciated. And some of, some of it is ground up and made into cloth, you know. Right. Uh, Makes sense. So uh, Good. That sounds like that would be something I would give a thumbs up to. It's yeah. bringing purpose, not going into the landfills. I, I know that uh, uh, there's a, I can't think of the name of it, uh, a large, a, a large uh, charity in, in L.A. That, that actually acquires things from other 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 places, stuff that they can't sell, and I give them three cents a pound or something for it, sure. and, and 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 package it and send it send it overseas. Yeah, uh, good. Know, we're, we're we have too much. We have too much. We are very generous, generous in the endowed society. Well, we are speaking. I'm, yeah. You know, we have I, we have a, I have a lot of stuff, and I actually have a little plaque on my wall, well, and it says, life is a balance of letting go and hanging on. Oh. <laughs> for me, that's so true. But you have to know what to hang on to and what well, to Well, that's why it's such on. a tricky thing, you know. <laughs> I have another plaque that says there, it takes the courage to know what to hang on to and what to get rid of, you yeah. know. It takes right. courage sometimes, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. But I think some things are going to stay with me forever, like books. But I don't buy books anymore. No, 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 no more books. Because I, first of all, Orange County Library System is amazing. Oh yes. Our Village Library System is well, good. For those who may not have have noticed, we now have a, uh, a branch of the Orange County Library uh, uh, in the city of Laguna Woods, right. in the city hall, actually. They built a new. It kind of always was there. In, embedded in City Hall, there was always a librarian, and she, you could always order books, which is what I do, and they would always be there to pick up. But now we actually have officially a, a designated library space mm -hmm. right there on the corner by City Hall. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. They just, uh, just this winter, I guess, uh, recently, the last month or so, yeah. uh, had their grand opening, and, yes. and uh, so you can go there. Uh, I, I will tell you that I was a patron. I donated money. And they have a lovely donation wall there, so oh, there I am. Because I be it's a cause I believe in. There are things I believe in, and uh -huh. you know, it's like public radio. I'm a big believer of public radio and public TV, mm -hmm. and it's kind of overwhelming in SoCal to see all the public radio stations because there's a lot. Well, yeah, I don't even I know of compared some, to but, Kentucky, but there's a. Yeah, Kentucky, Louisville, I mean, had three, and they were great, and they were in housed in one building. But here there's, like, the first six dials probably on my car wow. radio or are all public radio stations. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Wow. I know. So we're, we're rich in, uh, Absolutely. in uh, that, uh, that kind of thing. Yes. Do you go to uh, any of the uh, uh, 
uh, theatrical things that they, they have in, in, in the uh, uh, theater area here. Um, sure, I mentioned earlier about Costa Mesa. If you mean area, you mean Orange County. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I meant here in Laguna Woods. Well, you mean the like They're the not two too theater much companies? Theater no, I, I, I support it. I'm actually directing a little readers theater uh, oh. bit coming up in. I think it's coming up in April for theater guilds again, plugging theater guilds. Okay. Um, I like that. You know, I think there's so much. Everybody knows there's just so much to do. There's the documentary club that I'm involved in. There's um, the dances. Although I'm not a big supporter of all the rock and roll. I like bluegrass, hard to find here. Yeah. But I, rhythm and blues will work. I volunteer at the PAC, Performing Arts Center. They, their Champagne Pop series and the Boomer, the Chicago Club series, I mean, they're, we get, we are very lucky. We get great. Yeah. yeah. I sound like an ambassador for the village. There's you know? no reason. I, 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 I can see that, that, that you don't have much of a problem with boredom. No. <laughs> and there's no reason no. to be bored here no. in Laguna Woods. There's, no. There's it, any given day, there's probably 10 different things to do. Yeah, and there's opportunities if you've never tried something like hmm. lawn bowling. Why, maybe I need to try that. Or going to bingo or bocce ball. Or, I mean, Billy, I mean, it's there. I think I could live here for the rest of my life and not go to every club. <gasps> I think that's what I'm going to start doing, keeping track. <laughs> Going to every single club. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there are, what, uh, 250? Yeah, that's or something, okay. If I only did like know, that. So, you know, and, and new ones being formed yeah, all the time. Yeah, one every so. other month or something. One, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, yes, you probably could. Uh, I could try. You go uh, one a week, uh, yeah. that, would be, that would be three years uh, 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 just to, just, yeah. and, and by that time, several more will have formed. So. Yeah. I don't think I could do one a week. I think I don't think that I need time to process what I've been and say, maybe oh. I need to go back to that one too, okay. you know. Which ones am I gonna keep? Which ones will I let go? Yeah. I know. Well, Wendy, thank you. Uh this has been a, a fast uh, uh twenty eight minutes and <laughs> and uh, uh thank you for coming well, in and letting us uh chat with you a little bit. You're very welcome. Thank uh, you for asking. This was fun. Actress, you, uh, yeah. teacher, actress, uh, teacher, uh, uh, shopper. Yeah. Uh, and, I, I think of myself uh, as, a, as a Gemini, born and bred, and I think of myself as, as something of a, a very multifaceted person. I like checking things out. Somebody once called me a dilettante. I had to look it up, but I'll, I'll go for that. <laughs> okay. what did you, when you looked it up, what did you find? Uh, a person, it's like a from the 19th century kind of word, a per person who dabbles in a bunch of different topics, uh -huh. okay. you know, makes me good at trivia, and I do play competitive trivia outside is that, the gates. Of, of course you do. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> my team is good; they're very good. I just occasionally come up with an answer. Okay. Yeah. Well, Wendy, thank you for for your time and very interesting person, and thank you for joining us for today's edition of Laguna Woods Stories. Mm -hmm.